Hey there. All right, so we are going to review some factoring techniques. Now, you've already learned how to factor in a previous class. This is just a, a review, so I'm going to try to hit a balance of being quick but also being, you know, thorough in this. So let's start off. When we are factoring, I'm going to actually kind of create a flow chart here for us because what we're looking for is a process of looking at different types of um, polynomials and each one of them might factor differently. So I kind of look at it in a way of a process that you work through. The very first thing that you're going to look for when you're trying to factor is the greatest common factor. We call it the GCF. That's always, always what you're going to start with. Um, whether there's two terms or three terms or four terms, you look to factor out a common factor that they all have. So an example of that might be something like this. So I'll kind of sneak in an example here on the GCF. If you had 2x cubed minus 10x squared plus 4x. I look at each one of those terms and say, what do they all have in common? What's a common factor that they have? Well, I can see that 2 goes into all of them. So 2 would be the greatest common factor that goes into all. But they all have at least 1x that they're being multiplied by as well. So then I would say that the greatest common factor is a 2x. And I'm going to factor that out, which means pull it out in front and divide everything by that. I'm kind of undoing the distributive property here. So this 2x cubed that I have, when I factor out the 2x, I'm dividing by 2x, the 2s would go away, there was an x cubed, but since I factored one of them out, there's still an x squared sitting there. Minus, now 10x squared, I'm going to divide it by 2x, so that would be a 5, and then it was an x squared, but since I pulled one of them out, there's still one sitting there. Plus, and then I have 4x. If I divide that by 2x, 4 divided by 2 is 2. There was only 1x to begin with, and I factored it out, so there's nothing left there. All right, so this is the factored version of this one. All right, and again, you're kind of undoing the distributive property here. So what happens is that you're trying to, like, I can see that if I took the 2x times the x squared, I'd get the 2x cubed. If I took 2x times negative 5x, I'd have negative 10x squared. So again, just undoing that distributive property. That's what the GCF is. All right, so that's the first thing you look for. You're looking for the GCF. Now, once you've factored out a GCF, then we look at how many terms are there. And so I'm going to come way over here. You might end up with two terms. If you have two terms, the special thing that you might be looking for is it being a difference of squares. Now, if it's not a difference of squares, then you're pretty much done. And either you pulled out your GCF and you're done, or Maybe it's one of those ones that's non-factorable. If there wasn't a GCF and it's not a difference of squares, then you might write that it's non-factorable. All right. Um, the problem that might look like this, a difference means that you are subtracting. Of squares means they're both perfect squares. So something like this. 4x squared minus 81y squared. It's a difference, they're both, sub or it's subtraction, and these are both perfect squares. The numbers are perfect squares, but they also have a variable squared. So to factor that, we set up two binomials like this, and um, rather than undoing the distributive property, you're undoing FOIL, um, and we'll look at that a little bit more as we go. But ultimately, on a difference of squares, I'm going to look at this first term and say, all right, what did I square to get that? So it would have been a 2x, and then I put a 2x here. And then I look at the second term, and I say, what did I square to get 81y squared? Well, that would have been a 9y, 9y. But notice that it's a negative 81, so the only way I really would have done that is if one of those 9y's was positive and one of them was negative. 
and right there is my difference of squares factored. Now, I'll use this chance here to refresh your memory on FOIL. FOIL means that you're taking the first, and this is anytime you're multiplying two binomials, you take the first times the first, that's 4x squared. You take the outer, which are these two, and that's a negative 18y. Inner is a positive 18y. Those that end up canceling out. That's why there's only two terms. And then the last, again, FOIL, first, outer, inner, last, 9y times a negative 9y is negative 81y squared. All right. All right, so remember that also that not everything is going to end up being a difference of squares. It is possible that you have two terms and you pull out the GCF and you're just done. It doesn't have to be a difference of squares. All right, so let's look at the next scenario. The next scenario is instead of having two terms, there might be three terms. If you have three terms, we don't really have a special name for it. It's just your typical factoring type of problem. And let's look at what that might look at look like. Now, you always have the opportunity or the possibility of having a GCF first. Just like up here, you can see I had this GCF that I pulled out, and then I'm left with these three terms. Sometimes these three terms then will factor in the method we're going to show here. And the GCF is just the first step, and then you keep going. I'm not going to get that fancy here in our in this part, but we'll do some practice ones later. All right, so here is my example on three terms. x squared plus 7x minus 18. Now I'm looking to, and let's kind of recap this. this when we did the um, GCF, we were undoing the distributed property. Let's talk about FOIL real quick here. FOIL is when you multiply two binomials together. And so that looks like this. Two binomials that I'm multiplying. I'm either adding or I'm subtracting inside there. Okay, F stands for first, so I'm going to take the first and multiply it. O stands for the outer. I'm going to take the outer and then I'm going to do the inner. And typically the outer and the inner are like terms that combine to get us this middle term right here. So you got first, outer, inner, and then last. And the last will get us the last term. Uh, what we're trying to do is undo this process of FOIL and get it back into the two binomials. When I look at this example, so I'm gonna set up my two binomials, and I'm looking for the first. What could I multiply to get this first term? Well, it's going to be x times x. That's pretty straightforward. And then the last, what do I put in the last position? Well, it's whatever's going to multiply to get me negative 18. So maybe like negative 6 times positive 3. That would get me negative 18. But remember that the trick is that when you do the outer and the inner, they're supposed to be like terms that combine, they do, but they combine to get a negative 3x when you add those together, and I want it to be a positive 7x. So I picked the wrong ones. So I kind of wanted to show you that process of you're picking things that multiply to negative 18, but we also have to have them add up to this positive 7. So I'm getting rid of my negative 6 and positive 3, I don't think they're right. Can you think of other factors that multiply to negative 18, but will add up to 7? And hopefully you're thinking 9 and 2. Those multiply to 18, but since it needs to be a negative 18, I'd make one of them negative. That would get me a negative 18, but when I add it, it gets me a negative 7. So another option would be to go the other way with the negative. And so these would multiply to a negative 18, and add up to a positive 7. So that's what I'm going to put in here, plus 9 and a minus 2. And you can always check that if you want to redo the FOIL on it. Here's my first, that's x squared. Outer is negative 2x. Inner is 9x. That combines to 7x. And then there's your last. That works also. Some people like to check that. I don't usually take the time always. I spend enough time coming up with it that I pretty sure I'm right by the time I get there. Okay, that's how you factor a trinomial. It's three terms, trinomial. All right, so then that takes us to 
four terms. All right, if you do four terms, again, you might have the GCF that you start with, and then you look to do the four terms. And we'd call this factor by grouping because we're going to have four terms and we're going to group them into sets of two. Here, oops, here's an example of that. Now I purposely picked a tricky one here because when I group this into a set of these two and these two, I have to be careful about this minus sign that is here. That minus sign, if I were to leave it there and then I group it, and when I say group it, we're gonna put in parentheses around the two sets. So I'm gonna group the first two and then I would group the second two. Now you have to be careful because this minus sign means minus four X, but if I put in parentheses right there, it's subtracting all of that. So it's subtracting 4x, but it's also subtracting negative 32. That minus is not supposed to have anything to do with that negative 32. And when I put in the parentheses, it did. So what you should be doing, anytime that is a negative sign right there, you change it to plus a negative like that. The 4x stays negative when I do that. And when I put in my parentheses, the 4x is negative. But since this is a plus, it's not going to affect the 32. Now, if this started out as a plus sign, you don't have to worry about that little tricky thing. But if it's a minus sign in the middle there, change it to plus a negative. And then put in your grouping, your parentheses. All right. Now, once you've grouped, you do the GCF thing. You look at the first two. What's the GCF in there that you could factor out? Well, they both have a Y, so I'm going to factor out the Y. And then what would be left, as I divide each of those terms by Y, I'd have an X for the first term, I'd have an 8 for the second term. Plus, this is always going to be a plus sign. And then I look at what could I factor out, what's the GCF on the second part? Looking at that, 4 goes in both. In fact, negative, see how they're both negative? Let's pull out a negative 4. And then when you divide each of those terms by negative 4, negative 32 divided by a negative 4 is a positive 8. And when you do your factor by grouping, your whole goal is to get these two parentheses sets to match. If they match, factor by grouping has worked. And what you're going to do is you're going to write, now remember you're always trying to get back to these two binomials. So I'm going to write the x plus 8, I'm going to put the matching set that's the first one and then the second one is the leftover stuff that i factored out so in this case the y and the negative four and that is this four terms factored again if you like to check you can always check here's first is x y outer is negative four x inner is eight y Okay, those are not like terms like they were over here. Um, so they just are written separately. And then last is negative 32. We've got it. All right, we've got. Now, those are the um, different ways of factoring. And if that's all you needed, and you just needed a quick recap, and you think you're good to go, you can bail right now. I'm going to go ahead and do a few more problems. Um, like what you're going to see specifically, I just pulled them straight off of your Hawks assignment. So... The numbers will be different, but they're the same types of problems that you'll see. So if you need to see a little bit more, hang with me. We'll keep on going. Let's look at some of these two-term type of factoring problems. In this first one, remember that from the flowchart, the very first thing you're going to do is look to pull out a GCF. What's a common factor that goes into 4x and into 7? Well, 7's a prime number. There's nothing that goes into 4x and 7. This is one of those, I wanted to throw one out there, that this is one of those ones where they say is not factorable. I don't have a GCF that I could factor out. This is not a difference of squares because I'm not subtracting. This is not factorable. All right, every once in a while they throw that at you. Let's look at the next problem. Looking for the GCF, that's how I start. The greatest common factor. So looking first at the numbers, um, what, five goes into both of those? I'm gonna factor out a five. Then I look at the variable part. 
The first term has an x squared. The second one has an x. I can only factor out with as many x's as they both would be allowed to have, and 20 only has one to give, so I can only factor out the single x. Now, factoring out, we're undoing that distributive property, so now I'm dividing 75 divided by 5, that's 15. It was an x squared, but since I factored one of the x's out, I'd only have one sitting there still. Plus, now I do it with the 20x. 20 divided by 5 is 4. There was an x, but since I factored it out, it's not there anymore. Now I pull out the GCF, and then I look. Okay, difference of squares. That's the, the special thing with two terms, but it's not a difference, so I'm done. That's it. Pack, factored out the GCF. That's all I can do with it. Let's look at this third one. GCF, um, they're both even numbers. 2 is going to come out of both of those. I'll factor the 2 out. Um, and then the 2 doesn't have any variables, so I can't pull out a variable on this. 32 divided by 2, that's 16y squared minus 2 divided by 2 is 1. It looks like it's the same type of problem as over here. However, notice that it is a difference, and after I've pulled out the GCF, these both end up being perfect squares. The GCF was the first step. This is going to keep going. I keep the 2 out in front, and then I do the difference of squares factoring. Remember, the difference of squares is you're ultimately just saying, what did I square to get 16y squared? That'd be a 4y. What do I square to get 1? Well, 1 times 1 is 1, so that's a 1. And then remember that one of them is going to be a plus sign and one of them is going to be a minus sign. That's always the case. Square root the first number, that's your first. Square root the second number, that's your second, that's your last. And then one's a plus and one's a minus. That made the that's why there's only two terms, because when you do outer and inner, they cancel each other out. There's my answer. Let's spend a little bit of time on trinomials. They are the trickiest ones, and I've got several different types of them to go through. If you're wanting to jump to factor by grouping with four terms, skip ahead a little bit. But I've got several um, examples of these trinomials. We're going to start off with a perfect scenario where it's not that tricky. Um, looking at this first example, I don't have a GCF because there's no number on this and there's no variable on this. So there's not a GCF I could have. So I'm just going to set up my two parentheses. My first is going to have to be x times x. That's how I get x squared. Last has to multiply to get 24. 24 has a lot of factors. It might be 24 times 1. It might be 12 times 2. It might be 8 times 3 or 6 times 4. Lots of options here. It is a positive 24. That will tell me that my signs need to be the same. They're both pluses or maybe they're both negatives. I need my two numbers not only to multiply to 24, but they also must add up to this 10. When I look at my options, here's the one that I want. I want it to multiply to 24, add up to 10. Now, it is possible that it's a positive 6 times a positive 4, or it could be a negative 6 times a negative 4. However, when I add these up, I get a negative 10. When I add these up, I get a positive 10, and I want it to be positive. So I'm going to go with plus 6, plus 4. The second example, again, always starting by looking for that GCF. These are all even numbers. I can tell that 2 is going to factor out. Let's pull the 2 out. Divide everything by 2. Now what's left um, looks like it's going to be similar to the previous problem. When you factor, you keep that 2 out in front, and you kind of just ignore it, but you got to keep it there. If you forget to put it in, it gets counted wrong. Now I'm going to just try to factor this trinomial. Things that multiply to negative 10, but they have to add up to 3. Can we do this in our head? Multiply to negative 10, add up to 3. I think that's going to be a 5 and a 2. Oh, I got ahead of myself. 
it's x and x for your first. Okay, then 5 and 2, but since it's a negative 10, I want one of those positive and one of those negative. Since you want to end up with a positive 3 out of the deal, you better keep your 5 positive and make your 2 negative. All right, let's make it a little trickier. All right, these are the doozies. These are the ones that are a little bit trickier. You can see that I have now a coefficient in the front on these, and that's going to mess me up a little bit, and it's going to take a little bit more work. Let's go through them. Process. Very first thing, look for a GCF. On this first one, the thing that I can see the 42 doesn't have an X, so I'm not going to be able to pull out a variable, and this 31, I don't think anything goes into 31. I don't have a GCF on this one. Now, let's set up our two binomials. Get your eraser ready, because this is one of those, it's a guess and check process. It's not going to just be x times x, because I have a 4x squared now. And the 4 makes it even trickier, because it might be 2 times 2, or it might be 1 times 4. So I could put 2x and 2x, or 1x and 4x. Either way, that could go. And then when I come over here to the last, I have 42. That's kind of a big number. And as I go through all the options, I guess the one that jumps out at me would be 6 times 7. That would multiply to 42. But then I think, um, what, 3 goes into 42 14 times. It's an even number. 2 goes into it. 1 could go into it if I had to. It has a lot of options there. Because when I write this, um, when I do my outer and my inner on this, when I combine these, it's not just a 1x and a 1x anymore. So it's not as simple as a 6 that these have to multiply to 42 and add up to 31. That's not going to be the case. Because they're going to get multiplied, let's say I'm going to just throw in a 2x and a 2x. It might be wrong, I might have to go to 1x and 4x, but I'm just going to pick the 2x and 2x. And when I do my outer and my inner, so I'm going to throw in a 6 and a 7 just for something to try here, you can see that those numbers get multiplied by 2. So it's now it's going to be like a 14x and a 12x. Do those add up to 31x? They don't. Now, before I get too far ahead of myself, let's talk a little bit about our signs. Since this is a positive 42, then that means these two signs would have to be the same. Um, the same signs will end up a positive. But they might be a positive and a positive, but it could be like a negative 6 and a negative 7. That would still get me a positive 42. But if you look over here, since you're looking for a positive 31 out of that, you're not going to want to involve negatives in this. I do think that these are going to all stay positive. That actually makes life a little bit easier if I know that it's going to be a plus and a plus. However, that 6 and 7 are not placed correctly because I didn't get my 31 that I needed. What we typically would do is we would swap the 6 and the 7 because maybe they're just being multiplied wrong. But in this scenario... If you swap them, they're still going to get multiplied by 2. Because these are both 2's, it doesn't change anything. Okay, so I'm not going to mess with swapping them. I'm just going to jump to the... And, and for no particular reason other than just to try to be systematic in this, which is what you're going to want to do, um, don't just jump and try something and bail on everything and try something totally different and then try something totally different. What you end up doing is trying the same thing twice because you forgot that you had already tried it. So try to be systematic. I'm going to stick with my 2 and 2, and I'm just going to go down my list. Now I'm going to try 3 and 14. The outer gets me a 28x. Inner gets me a 6x. Do those add up to 31x? Nope. All right, I could try swapping them, but since they're both getting multiplied by the 2, swapping them is just going to still get me the 28 and the 6. So, like I said, get those erasers ready. We're going to try something else. Let's try the 2 and the 21. Let's 
going to get me a 42 and a 4, or 42 and 4X, whatever. Um, but either way, that's way too big. That's getting too big to add up to 31. And so you start getting smart about picking these numbers because that's that's way too big. It adds up over 31. What do you think is going to happen when I do 1 and 42? Way, way, way too big. So I'm not even going to mess with it. I think what this means to me is that my 2 and 2 must be wrong because I've tried the two and two with all of those and nothing worked. All right, time to bail on the two and two. I'm gonna put in the one X and the four X now. And then I'm gonna start over on my list on the right. Let's put in a six and a seven. All right, that's going to get me an outer of 6x and an inner of 28x. And when I add those up, that's going to get me, what, 34x. Close, but not quite. Here's that example where because that's a 1 and a 4, maybe it's not the 6 times the 1. Maybe it should be the 7 times the 1. So here's where I'm going to swap the 6 and the 7. Let's see what happens if I do that. Now my outer is 7x and my inner is 24x. What do those add up to? Hallelujah, we finally got it, 31x, there it is. Whew, we worked hard for that. We just found it, I'll rewrite it so it's cleaned up down here. We have an x plus six and a 4x plus seven. And you can always go back and check it on foil if you wanna make sure, but we got it right there. Now I kind of purposely made, made that one a tricky one so you see the process. They're not all like that, but just so that you see that process of guessing and checking and guessing and checking and guessing and checking. All right, I just quick so swapped out that last this next question here because I want it to um, be a little bit different. Let's look at GCF. Is there a GCF that will come out? Yep, four comes out of that. So factor the four out, and then you'll have a two x squared plus three x, and four goes into 56 14 times. This is one of those problems where you pull the GCF out first, it makes all your numbers smaller, so that's nice, but you're not done. We're gonna try to factor this trinomial. I was a little bit nicer. The first term is a two x squared. You don't really have options. It's going to have to be 2 times 1. So I'm going to put in my 2x and my 1x. That 1 is optional there. Now, for the last, I'm going to have factors of 14. And again, as soon as I put a number in these first spots, it's not as simple as factors of 14 that multiply to 14 and add up to the 3. It's not as simple as that. So I am going to go ahead, and I guess I got my 2 and my 1 in there, so I don't even have to worry about options over there. 14, what, that could be 2 times 7, it could be 1 times 14. Notice that it is negative 14. That means that one of those two numbers, the 2 or the 7, would have to be negative. And just to get me started, I'm just going to automatically make the 2 be negative, and then we'll, um, and I'll make the 1 be negative, and then we'll change it if we need to. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is just put my 2 and my 7 in there and see what happens. So I'm going to put in my negative 2 and my positive 7 and check my outer and my inner. So my outer is 14x, my inner is negative 2x. That would add up to 12x, which is not what I'm shooting for. I Oh, oh wow, how that's a coincidence. See this 12x up here at the top? It's not that that I'm shooting for. I've already factored the 4 out. I'm looking for this 3x now. And that is not 3x. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to swap. I'm going to stick with 2 and 7, but I'm going to swap them. And let's see what happens if I trade the 2 and the 7. Now outer is going to get me a 4x and inner is gonna get me a negative 3x. Oh, where did I get that? No, it's not. Inner is a negative 
7x. What happens when you combine those together? Uh, I was doing that in my head and, <laughs> and wrote it too quick. That's my negative 3x right there. I'm looking for a positive 3x. So I am so, so very close, but I have the wrong sign. All we got to do is trade your signs. Let's make this be a positive, which would make that positive, and change this minus 2 to a negative 2. Now it's a negative 4, and that's going to get you your positive 3x that you need. All right, cleaned up looking. GCF is out in front. you got to keep it there. The order that you write these two binomials here does not matter. You can you could have written the x minus 2 and then the 2x plus 7. As long as you get the signs matched up with the right numbers, it's all good. All right, let's move on. Let's try one more trinomial here. I was going to show you this other method. Typically what we would be doing here is we'd be looking for factors of 7, and we'd have 7 and 1, and we do factors of 2, that's 2 and 1. This wouldn't be too bad of a problem because I don't have very many options. It's just a matter of getting them arranged. Um, I didn't want to spend a whole lot of time with big numbers again, but... Um, looking at this another way, rather than worrying about the 7 and the 1 when you're doing your, your foil here and putting your 7 and 1 here, what we can do is we can address it before we split it up into two binomials. And this is called the AC method. We think of this term here, this is your A, this is your B, and this is your C. And the AC method says take A times c and that's where you get that seven involved is right off the bat instead of looking for factors of two that multiply to two but will add up to 13 we can get the seven involved right away if you multiply those then you get a negative 14. and now you're looking for factors that multiply to negative 14 and add up to 13. because we've involved the seven now we don't have to set up the options. When I look at what are my factors of negative 14, it could be 2 and 7, 1 and 14. Uh, because it's negative, one of those would have to be negative. Now I also want it to add up to this middle term. Well, that would have to be this one here. What we do then is instead of setting up the two binomials, I'm going to rewrite this trinomial into four terms. I'm going to write the 7y squared, but instead of writing the 13y, I'm going to break it apart into these two factors here. It's going to be a negative 1y and a positive 14y. You can see that those would simplify to that 13y that I have up there. I've just broken it apart, and then I still have my minus 2. By breaking it apart, I've created four terms. And these four terms, then I'm going to do factor by grouping with. Remember the factor by grouping, where you do the parentheses here. We got lucky. This is already a plus sign, so I don't have to worry about that. And now I'm going to pull out a GCF on each one of those. In this first one, it looks like a Y could come out. Then I'd have a 7 y minus 1 plus look for your GCF on this set looks like it's a 2 then I'd have 7 y minus 1 remember your goal to get these two to match they do so we write that 7 y minus 1 and then your second set is the leftovers the y plus 2 we factored that, We've, so ultimately we got down to here. It's a different way, rather than guess and check, it's a way that you can, it, um, a little bit more, that's, there's no guessing and checking. It's pretty straightforward. As soon as you find the, the factor over here that works, then you just do factor by grouping. If you like factor by grouping, this maybe is a good method for you. The downside, I do want to point out what the downside of that is. If you look back at one of our previous problems, we had a 4x squared plus 31x plus 42. If you do the AC method on this and you multiply the A times the C, look at what you'd have. 
that would be 168. And you'd have to sit here and come up with all the factors of 168. Um, 1 and 168. 2 and, I don't know, whatever that is, 84, I think. 4 and 42. But I could be sitting here, man, I'd have a lot of options. And, and it might take me a while to come up with all of those options. So that's where the AC method is not as awesome, probably, if you had big numbers for A and C. But it's another option. And your directions as you do your factoring, they'll ask you to use a particular method. Honestly, I don't care which method you use. You can use either one of them and get to your answer. Um, use what works best for you. Let's do one last factor by grouping with four terms. I didn't do it on the previous one, but you should still be doing GCF. I kind of Picked one that, oh, I thought it had a GCF, and then, oh, then I got to the 7. Okay, I guess it doesn't have a GCF, because it doesn't have an R to pull out either. All right, then I'm going to do my grouping. Remember the thing with if this is a minus sign, you have to change it to plus a negative before you put the parentheses in there, and you sneak those parentheses so that you have a plus sign in the middle. Then on the first set, you're going to pull out your GCF. 2 goes into both of those, plus they all have, they both have R's, I could pull out two R's on that. Then what's left, 4 divided by 2 is 2, it was an R cubed, but I pulled two of them out, so I still have one sitting there. Plus, now I do 14 divided by 2, that's 7. I had an R squared, but I pulled them both out, so there's none left. Plus, now I look over here, what could I factor out? Well, 2 and 7, nothing really goes into those. There's not an R in both of them. I think probably, remember what your goal is that you want it to match this one? Do you notice that these are both negative? What if we factor out a negative 1? That would make that be a positive 2R and a positive 7, and now they're going to match like I want them to. So I write the matching set and I write the leftover. And that's your factor by grouping. And that factor by grouping is ultimately what you're doing on that previous problem. You're making those middle term, you're taking your middle term and separating it into two terms so that you can do factor by grouping on it. So if you like factor by grouping, that AC method might be a good one for you when you're doing your trinomials. All right, hope this helps.